This is the photo and video montage of my walk along the GR70 Robert Louis Stevenson Trail, which is known as the Chemin de Stevenson in France. I walked the route during the first two weeks of September 2021. The trail is based on the walk that Robert Louis Stevenson undertook in 1878 and is described in his book Travels with a Donkey in the Cévennes. I had planned to walk the GR in June of 2020. Then Covid stopped the world. I rescheduled to June 2021. I was still unable to go because of restrictions, so I rebooked to travel on September the 1st. In August, I did consider the alternative of walking the Dales Way through Yorkshire and the Lake District. However, it was impossible to get accommodation for the complete route. I persevered and eventually managed to book accommodation for every night of my trip. It took over 100 emails to book the 11 nights on the route. My wife dropped me off at, uh, for the 710 train from Wigan North Western uh, to London and uh, as my Eurostar train wasn't until 12.30, this allowed ample time for any journey delays, of which there was one of about 30 minutes. Eurostar arrived at Paris Gare de Nord on time just before 4pm, which gave an hour to get across Paris to Gare de Lyon. This was dead easy. You just follow the instructions on seat61.com to get the RER train. The train journey actually took seven minutes and they are every six minutes so I arrived at Gare de Lyon with plenty of time to spare. Travelling first class to Lyon cost me four euros more than second class so I was able to relax in comfort arriving at Lyon at 7pm. I arrived some time on the Thursday morning to explore Lyon and I took a lunchtime train to Le Puy. You actually switched to a bus at saint Etienne for the second half of the two hour journey. To help with the route, I took two books, the Cicerone Guide in English and the France Randonné book in French, which has the advantage of including 1 to 50,000 maps of the whole route. An overnight stop in Le Puy allowed me to uh, enjoy the town, which is well worth an extended visit. After enjoying a an evening restaurant meal, I came across this uh, Son et Lumière display. The first morning of my walk was a bit damp, but here's some idea of the architecture in Le Puy and a view back of the town on my first climb. Here's an example of the GR markings. This, this one a tree uh, warns you to have a right turn. I had already crossed one great river, the Rhone at Lyon, and I've been close to the Seine in Paris, and that was the turn of the Loire over 500 miles from where it flows into the Atlantic and only about 50 miles from its source. At this point, uh, Stevenson had yet to uh, start his walk, but I would guess that uh, uh, it would be very this would be very challenging for a donkey. As I had so much difficulty in booking accommodation, I was surprised that I was the only person staying uh, at... Uh, the sheet de tap um, and the price of 36 euros is not just for the four course meal with a bottle of wine but it includes the bedroom which I had to myself and breakfast. Uh, Jeep Moncalm was to be the uh, finest value of all accommodation. The following morning after about half an hour I reached Le Monastier which is where Stevenson started his walk. 
Here are some views from the second day. As you can see, not everyone travels with a rucksack. And you do see several signs that uh, you are on the Shimanda Stevenson. My second night on route was spent at uh, Chambordot at Barget. Although acceptable, it's not was well, not in the same league as the previous Gite Montcalm. Staying at uh, Barget meant I had a, a long day ahead to reach the my next uh, booking at Langogne, so I had an early start. I did make an error in that uh, I missed the correct turn on the GR70 and instead headed down the GR700. I had contemplated taking the GR700 to reduce the day's walking, but after a, a few minutes thought uh, I decided to uh, take the road to rejoin the GR70 at uh, the Boucher Saint Nicholas with its statue to Stevenson. Here's an example of uh, uh, where they would do their washing in days gone by. I arrived at Landos at about 11am to have a rest, a chat uh, with the walkers and to get some shopping for my lunch uh, with the small supermarket which was open being a Sunday morning. Here's an example of uh, railway architecture. And they view in direct the direction of Langogne. Pradel is normally a good option for an overnight stay, but it was full. It is a quite uh, interesting village, uh, small town, I suppose. Returning to lunchtime, it looks like a, a four-legged friend wished to share my lunch, as, uh, as they often do. And uh, finally arriving at uh, Le Modestine, at Langon, I needed a beer. It had been a hot day, all day. Uh, the, uh, the Gite, uh, the Modestine, uh, is so named because uh, Stevenson's donkey was called Modestine. After two nights accommodation as a sole guest, it was good to have conversation with fellow walkers. On the following morning, there were cyclists uh, on the route uh, used up to uh, Saint Fleur and its little theatre. I planned to have lunch at uh, the bar at Chalard Levesque. Alas, it didn't open until 2.30, so I had to make my own, cooking some dried pasta and sauce that I'd packed. Around 4pm, I was passing the Chateau de Luc, uh, and a little later, the village of Luc, uh, after another long day, 30 kilometres and two and a half thousand feet or 770 metres of ascent. Day five was finally an easy day and a fairly early start meant I was passing the monastery at uh, uh, Notre Dame de Neige at about 11 a.m. and arriving at my destination of La Bastide de Puylerant by midday. This gave me opportunity for a leisurely lunch at the hotel uh, La Grande Halt. The afternoon was spent with a leisurely sunbathe in the park and a wander around the town. Scheduled at 28 kilometres, day six turned out to be even longer at 32 and a half kilometres as the accommodation uh, was not in the village of Le Blémard but five kilometres off the GR70 and in the wrong direction. It started with a cool 900 foot climb in the first two miles and after another of 1100 foot just after uh, lunch at Mirondel. 
past the uh, Stevenson Scarecrow and a plethora of signs and more lavoirs. There's the magnificent via viaduct at Le Mirondal. I don't know much about this uh, sign about Powtech collaborators, but it is nothing to do with the Second World War. So you see, the date is 1890 something. Day seven was potentially to be very difficult as thunderstorms had been predicted. However, come the morning, this had reduced to a, a gentle drizzle, which was ideal for walking, if not for photos. A group of us walked the five kilometres to Le Blémard, which had a small supermarket to stock up for lunch, and the small town was very busy with walkers. And some even had their own donkey, or a mule. I was now heading towards the highest point of the trail, passing through the ski resort of Mont and following the drover's uh, markers. The weather was fine. We're heading up uh, for the summit of Finiels, which is about 5,600 feet above sea level, uh, but although it's now quite fresh and windy. Soon after the summit, I found a nice warm spot to have my lunch. I arrived to uh, rejoin friends from Langogne and others for a beer at uh, Le Pont de Montvert. Day eight was where the wheels came off. Started fine with a 726 foot climb in the first mile. And after passing signs of, of local industry at about four miles, I could feel a uh, pain in my quadriceps muscle of my right leg. First I didn't worry about it, but then it get, began to get worse, slowing me down quite dramatically. I planned to leave the GR70 at the first opportunity uh, to try to uh, hitch a lift or uh, any unlikely bus or taxi to my destination at Florac. This was at the Col de Sapet, uh, but as the path looked much flatter then and, and easier to walk on, I decided to continue for a while, uh, encouraged by a group of ladies who call themselves Lay Walking Girls. Uh, I would then switch to the GR68, which would reduce the distance to Florac. It's still been 16 miles with over 2,500 foot of ascent, and even worse, 3,600 feet of descent to Florac, as 1,100 foot, uh, it's 1,100 foot lower than Le Pont de Montbert. Even worse, at around 4pm on a rest, I discovered that I'd lost my wallet. So I arrived at the hotel in Florac with no money, no cards and no longer in a fit state to walk. I spent all the evening sorting out uh, emergency funding from my wife and with no alternative transport available, set off after lunch for my destination of Saint-Germain-de-Calbert. I managed to get a lift to uh, Bar de Seven and then set about walking or hitching the 20 kilometres to Saint Germain. After about six miles walking, I then managed another lift to about a mile from Saint Germain. I actually walked on part of the GR7, uh, which is my fourth GR of the walk after the uh, GR70, GR700, and GR68. The Gite de Tape uh, Le Racon 2 at Saint Germain was superb. Uh, especially the food with dinner, the dinner, bed and breakfast, and a couple of glasses of the wine costing a meagre 45 euros. Day 10 was to be a long day, but uh, the pain in my quad was manageable and I was able to maintain three miles per hour, even on the climbs. Uh, there were many fellow walkers on the trail and uh, people just out for the day. I reached Saint-Jean-de-Garde, which would have been my choice for accommodation, but none had been available. 
And after a look around the town and a beer with fellow walkers uh, from La Roque uh, I set off for the remaining 5.7 kilometres to Mielet. The first half was easy, uh, climbing local roads, and then, then the route went off onto a, a rocky path. Although no great climbs or descents, my quad was now in severe pain, so I slowed from about 20 minutes per mile to over 45 minutes per mile. There was no way I could walk the uh, following day, especially as the terrain would be equally challenging. Luckily, there was a bus to Alish shortly after 9am. I arrived in Alish much earlier than planned, so I was able to get my Covid test done and book into the hotel early. I was very impressed with Alish and it is well worth a return. The following day allowed a leisurely transfer to Nîmes using the frequent train service. I arrived at the station with only a few minutes before the next departure and on, on boarding the train it seemed to take an age before departure so much that uh, the journey which should take 30 minutes took an hour and a half. When I arrived in Nîmes I could see why. The town had been devastated by a powerful thunderstorm. What, what can I learn from my walk, which uh, I've done much harder walks over the, over the years, the uh, uh, GR10, which goes across the Pyrenees, and I've, I've run 50 mile, mile uh, events in the Pyrenees. Um, but I think what you've got to do is, is try and allow an extra day or two for any mishaps which can come across. And if you can go when it's less busy, do so. I mean, th this year was exceptional. In normal years, September is, is much quiet, as it is in the UK. Uh, but uh, this year it's been totally different. And if you can get away by being flexible with bookings, do so. And don't push yourself to the limit and reduce your carrying load by making use of the baggage transfer options, uh, which I've always frowned upon in the past, but uh, can be quite useful. So thank you for watching.